Hi, Anthony and Bob Barker here, and today we're going to be showing you how to make new drawers for your kitchen cabinets, as well as how to retrofit them for the undermount slides. So, let's get started. Okay, so my original plan is we were actually just going to redo the whole kitchen. But as we're doing it, we actually like the layout of the cabinets and everything, so we figure instead of just tearing them up and putting the same exact uh, layout in place, we might as well just kind of refresh them. So I'm going to be redoing all the cabinet doors and the drawers, and the drawers definitely need to be done. If you see these things, it's very uh, flimsy and we don't like this part, and they don't even have slides. You can see they just basically have little rollers here and a little brace up top that holds it in place. It just doesn't really flow well for what we need. So I'm going to redo all of this, which means I'm going to have to fit in some new um, brackets in the back. That way we can actually attach the slides. And, you know, this is not the, not the worst cabinets in the world, but the wife would definitely prefer like a little bit more of a clean look. Uh, we're going to go with like just the classic shaker style. All right, so to get started, we're gonna get these cabinets prepared. And I'm taking off these little supports because it turns out they're actually not really supporting anything and we just didn't like the look of them. And Bob Barker agreed. So this is the inside of the existing cabinets with those uh, metal brackets that are the slides now. So we're gonna get this ready to support the new undermount slides. So the front of those undermount slides will just sit on the face frame, but the back needs something for it to attach to. And the back of those cabinets are a little bit too flimsy, so we're cutting down this piece here, and then I'm just carefully marking out exactly where I need them to be so everything lines up well. And you can kind of see all my different marks here. So I know exactly where the support pieces are gonna sit and what holes need to be drilled. And the undermount slides that I got, they had this really hard plastic uh, support for the back of them that had these little, uh, tabs on there so I just drilled the holes out for that and then we put these in place and the nice thing with these is they actually are movable so that gives us a little extra wiggle room with the installation so if we don't get it absolutely perfectly for those three drawers that I just kind of pointed out that'll kind of help us adjust it in place. So I get that support piece all ready and then I just put it here in there and I kind of enlisted the wife for this one. I could have found a way just to kind of rig that up and then screwed it in but since she was there to help it made it a lot easier. And of course, Bob Barker made sure to supervise her the whole time. And because we're going to be repainting these cabinets, we just go ahead and screw it straight through the back into those support pieces. And then afterwards, I use some epoxy putty to fill up the holes and we'll sand it down and you'll never even know that it was screwed in through there. And when I measured out the size for the support piece I was uh, putting in, I factored in that I wanted to butt it up to that uh, existing piece up there and it still lines up perfectly right where the drawer slides are going to be. So once we have that in, the next part is getting rid of the old hardware. And as you can see, we are redoing the countertops as well. So I just took the opportunity just to go straight in this way. It made it a lot easier than climbing into the cabinet since I could just remove that plywood for now. And then we also need to take off all those roller pieces. They're basically just all stapled on. But it didn't take much time to get those out. And you can see how easy these are to install once you have the uh, bracket in place. You just slide it right into it and it sits on the face frame and then you just screw it in and it's installed. And if you're doing this type of project, I would definitely recommend getting these installed first before you make the drawers. Um, because that way you can measure from the slide to slide exactly the size of the drawers you need to make sure it's nice and precise and everything is going to fit properly. And that can just save you a ton of headaches later on. And after we get this one all ready, we need to make some brackets for the drawers over on the side. Um, we actually have a few different bays that we're putting these into, so I'm making multiple different support pieces. So I'm following the same process again, just kind of laying it out, except for these ones are um, vertical drawers. So I'm making two uh, longer pieces, one that is going to go on each side, and then just get those little uh, plastic supports in the back, and then it's ready to go. And to install these, we're just doing the same exact thing. I'm just kind of shoving them back in there in between the existing support pieces. And then I'll spin around to the back end and get those screwed in. And then here you can see before what the cabinet looked like. And then you can see what the support's in afterwards. And of course, I still do need to take out that center bracket. And I did wait to take that out until we were ready to get, start getting the drawers in place because we use those drawers often. And I didn't want to have this part of the cabinet being empty until we needed it to. So 
I started to take this off and turns out this thing was super flimsy. I just took off one little staple and the whole thing was loose. Kind of can't believe that it actually held up the drawers. So after that, Bob Barker gave me some words of encouragement to keep me chugging. So I took off those extra little rollers and then we could get making some shims that we're gonna be using to help install the drawer slides. And these were just cutting down to the width of the inner part of the face frame to the cabinet. That way we can just insert these here uh, with some pocket hole screws and that's gonna hold the back of the drawer slide there. And I figured since these bottom ones, they didn't really need the extra supports because I can just screw those straight in and those will sit in nicely. After we finished that up, we had two more drawers to do. So I just uh, cut off two small pieces to do those and we put those in as well. Then it's on to making the drawers themselves. So the depth of it was already determined by our cabinets. I just wanted to make sure it fit nicely with the undermount slides that we're doing. And the width of the front and back pieces is determined off of the measurement that you're taking directly on the drawer slides. So you're just measuring from each part of the slide that comes out uh, from the outer edge of, this, of those, and that'll give you the exact uh, width of, that, of those pieces that you need. And we're using the stop block here to make sure they're all uniform size. After we get all the pieces cut out, we want to put on the edge banding. So we just basically cut it to size and then you get the iron nice and hot and then you start to do that and you'll feel it kind of sink down when it's uh, starting to adhere. And I like to make sure that I hit up all those edges pretty good. That way the adhesion for it is uh, really nice and tight and you don't see open gaps once you trim it down. Then you just use this edge bend trimming tool that has some razors in there and you just run it along the edge and it cuts off all the excess. And I initially started off using some scissors, but I ended up using a razor blade to trim off the last little pieces on the far edge there. And I do have links to the supplies that I used down in the description below in case you're interested in any of those. So after we finished uh, getting the edge bending on, it's time to get the dado grooves in. So for this one, I am just using my regular blade on my table saw. And then we did one pass on all of the drawer sides and backs and fronts. And then we used our tester piece to move the fence over a little bit and get that dado groove just wide enough so it fits properly with the uh, bottom uh, plywood that we're going to be using. And so once we got that all dialed in, we just go ahead and run that in through all the drawer sides and we're ready to start making the bottoms now. For these drawers, I did use Baltic birch plywood. We're using one quarter inch for the bottoms and uh, one half inch for all the side pieces. And of course, when you're cutting these down, you want to make sure you take into account the, the depth of the dado grooves to make sure you get the right size. So after we have that done, we want to cut out the little notches in the back of back pieces of the drawers, and that's going to accommodate the uh, undermount drawer slides as well. So I'm using my super old jigsaw for that, which I do have a replacement now, but I didn't when I was making this. Next up was some handing. I used my uh, sheet sander a little bit as well as some hand sanding just to get everything exactly how I wanted it. And then we can get that ready for assembly and finishing. Um, but before we do that, of course, uh, got a lot of pocket holes to drill. And for these ones, we're doing the pocket holes on the front and back pieces and you'll never see those once we get it fully assembled. Whenever I'm making these, I always do a dry fit first just to make sure everything lines up properly and nothing needs to be adjusted. Once I'm happy with it, then I go ahead and glue all the edges there and then we can get it assembled. And when, when I'm using the pocket holes like this, I always use clamps on it just to make sure it stays exactly where I want it and doesn't uh, wander when you're tightening those screws down. So I'll typically just kind of get one, one ready to go, screw it in and then switch it over to the other side. Then I repeated that for all the drawers except for this one. Because um, this drawer right here is a very shallow drawer. And if we use the undermount slides, you do have to sacrifice uh, some of that space um, just to you know account for the slides. And I didn't want to do that because then nothing's really going to fit in this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put the sides together and then we're going to put the bottom piece just straight on there and, and screw it right into place. And that's going to give us much more uh, usable space in this particular drawer. And of course with that we can't use the undermount slides on this one so I'm just going to do side mount uh, drawer slides. So I mark out all the places where my screws are going to go, we get that screwed into place, and then I come back with my trim router and put a chamfer on there just to kind of clean up those edges and kind of make that kind of hide and disappear. And once we got all the drawers made, then it's time to get them finished. So for these ones, we're just doing a wipe on uh, polyurethane and that'll kind of keep them nice and protected uh, for the use in the kitchen. And of course I made sure I had good ventilation even though apparently I forgot to wear my mask when I was doing this one, but I did wear it for the rest of them. 
We ended up doing three coats on there, which is a light hand sanding in between. And I do want to mention, if you haven't used the white palm poly before, the first time you do it, it comes out really weird and kind of rough, and you kind of feel like you might have messed it up. But don't worry. Once you kind of get a nice little light sanding and extra coats on there, it'll come out nice and smooth, as you can see on these ones. Next up is the hardware for the undermount slides. And for these ones, you just put it in the corners and I use a self-centering drill bit to, to, just to make it nice and easy when I put those screws in. And then once we get those in place, they're ready to be installed. Well, almost ready. We still gotta make one more uh, drill hole just for the little uh, tiny protrusion that holds these in place. So of course I just kind of bang it on there just to get a little dent so I know exactly where I need to drill and then it will go in. And you can see here, installing them, how easy it is for those just to sit in those brackets. And then we put these in and it slides really nicely. And I, I really do prefer the undermount drawer slides. They just work so much nicer than the other ones. Now for here, I originally was going to put them on that top drawer, but like we uh, mentioned earlier, I ended up just doing the side mounts for this one just for extra depth on the drawer. So we took out the back brackets and we put in uh, more shims here. And then I clamped uh, my Craig jigs there to the face frame so that it gives me a nice uh, surface where I can know where to put those shims as well as to make it easy to in install these uh, drawer slides. So we, after we got those screws into place, I put the drawer on there with a little bit of a spacer underneath it. Um, that way it kind of comes out smoothly and then came time to attach the inner part of the slide to the drawer itself. So I just slide it off a little bit and screw it into place and then I realized Oh yeah, the other side, <laughs> I can't reach it because of the dishwasher. Um, so I ended up just uh, kind of marking it with a pencil where that needed to be and then put this uh, on once with, with the drawer out and double checking to make sure it's exactly level. And then after that, we can reinstall that drawer. As I'm watching this playback, I don't know how the heck I got all that sawdust on my back and hair and everything, but uh, that's just part of these projects. So move along, we're going to continue to install the rest of the drawers. Um, so it's the same process as before. And once you get them in there, just make sure those black back uh, pieces are the right width and it'll slide nice and smoothly. And they are really easy to adjust, as you can see with this one. It was off, but I adjusted it and then it goes perfectly. So another extra piece that I needed to do was put on these false fronts. And we put these under the, the kitchen sink as well as over here where the stove goes. And I like to just put a, like a little message there when I put them in just for the fun of it. So we use spacers and we just uh, uh, tape those into place on top of the spacers and we make sure everything lines up perfectly with all of the uh, cabinet doors that we're putting in as well. And they had this plastic piece that was holding in the old ones, as you can see right here. So I just basically ripped off the old ones and I just used those plastic pieces that were in place to screw them in and it kept them nice and secure. Then the last part is gonna be putting on the rest of the drawer faces. And if you're curious to see how we made all of these drawer faces, I had that in the last video. I'll put a link up on the top right there for you in case you wanna check that out. So I just use the spacer and uh, drill into the drawer itself uh, temporarily, and then we can pull that out and then use some screws from the inside to fully secure that. And then once that's in place, we take out those temporary uh, screws and then I use a, a clamp um, on a backer piece and I'm just using uh, the, the rags here just because I didn't want to damage the fresh paint um, and then we can screw all the way through and that's going to give us uh, the holes that we need to install our drawer pulls. And for all the drawers that are above the cabinet doors we just use those same spacers um, and it, it make sure everything has a good uniform uh, look to it and then the last part was getting uh, the vertical drawers uh, put in place, the drawer faces. So I just clamped uh, the pieces down to the bottom of the cabinet face there, and then that gets it nice and lined up. And then I use the same spacers to get the space in between each one. And we just did that all the way up and using the same process um, to attach them as the others. All right, that's it. The project is done. And we also redid the counters and backsplash and some of that other stuff. But with these new drawers, we really love it. It's so much nicer and so much more functional than it used to be. Um, so we hope you guys like the videos that we're doing. And just for a heads up for some upcoming projects, we did a 10-foot built-in in our uh, dining room. 
I got some patio chairs that I'm making for the uh, outside and we got a few other little small upgrades we got for the kitchen. And then beyond that, we're gonna be doing uh, some charcuterie boards and a giveaway. Um, and so I'll keep you guys updated that in the future. So we'll see you guys in the next one.